Thank you very much. Thank you, Eva. And thank you for the rest of the planning committee to invite us here to make this uh, keynote speak. We're very excited about it. And, um, and, and both Paul. And Mette, we are both happy to, <laughs> <laughs> to be here, uh, to have the chance to share our thoughts and our experience on how nature interpreters can play a role in developing democracy and, and democratic skills, especially in young children and, and young people. So we're coming from the, a new center at the Copenhagen University called the Center for Outdoor Life and Nature Interpretation. And there we uh, have uh, some colleagues. We are now seven colleagues there, and three of them are researchers. And working together with researchers and us as uh, course managers and project leaders has become very interesting in developing different kind of programs and inspiring each other. Some of the projects that we uh, are going to undertake in the nearest future is uh, a future concept for nature schools. We have got uh, donations to do that, starting from this autumn, or having making sex book booklets about how to develop and how to uh, inspire the field in coming up with new kind of outdoor facilities, maybe to inspire learning methods, or uh, to inspire new kind of exercises and health activity in nature. And as Eva said, one of the things that we have been very happy to be engaged with is the Common Nordic Project, where we have worked together. And one of the items in this project is democracy, how to develop democracy and our nature interpretation. And as we heard yesterday, maybe we, we were there hearing uh, Ted Cable, he said something with citizenship is a tough occupation. And to come there and to go there, we think that uh, we need to influence people's relationship with nature and to increase the environmental awareness, which I think many of us do, uh, focusing at it. But also this most important thing is it's boiling up to become the, to empower people to contribute to sustainable development. And that's task, and that's assignment, that's a difficult one. That's the hard one to deal with. And in this project we came up with in a Nordic uh, project, we came up with three special points from our side that was most important. Uh, one thing is how to promote mental ownership and uh, look at the nature interpreters, maybe not as a nature interpreter, but maybe more like a facilitator, and how to communicate and promoting dialogue and reflections among the participants. And therefore we had this project and we were happy to talk with and share our experiences with people from Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Finland, and Faroe Island. And in the project, we had a seminar with uh, nature interpreters coming from all around. So we were, had a gathering and uh, workshops together with 30 of the nature interpreters and looking and how, tried how to discuss and develop their own activities in the field. <laughs> Just finished this report. We have four of them with us. For those of you that give us very good positive feedback during our speech, <laughs> it might be up here. <laughs> so what, what is democracy and how can we understand democracy? As we see it, um, an important part of understanding democracy is having the capacity of, of influencing your own, your own uh, uh, situation, so to speak. Um, this could be according to environmental problems, so how can we as citizens in, in, the, in the community be able to speak out and, and make decisions on, on our own, own situation and on the nature situation and in nature management? To do that, it implies that we have to train being democratic citizens. It, it demands democratic skills. And how can we as nature interpreters promote or enhance, especially the children and the young people, to, to be able to, 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 to gain skills, but also to use them in an active way? That we find is very interesting, and we'll try to unfold it a little bit more with some, uh, some examples further on. But to look at how we as nature interpreters should promote these democratic skills, then we have to look at ourselves, and we have to look at ourselves in a way that what kind of role is it that we are playing or we are having when we are standing in front of our target groups or our audience? 
what, in, in what position do we take? And I think that we should think very much of that we can have three positions. We can either be in front. So we are the ones standing in front of people telling them what is right and what is wrong. Listen to me, I'll tell you all the right things. If you do as I do, we can have a better work, world together. That's one position. Another position is to be next to the target group, or next to the children in this case. So how can we stand beside them and be together with them, equally doing the activities that can help them be able to, uh, to, to gain these skills or gain some experience? And the third position, and this is a quite difficult position for many of us to be in, that's standing behind the group. So how can we withdraw from the group and letting the group take control of what's going to happen? So they are the ones making the choices. They are the, they are the ones coming up with their own plans of how to solve problems. And it's in this position, I think, that all the exciting things happen. It's when, we, when we take the power to let the control, or to, to, to let them take control of what is going to happen, that, uh, that things really develop. During this uh, project that Paul was uh, talking about, you saw the report, or the report. We, had, we also had a researcher from Denmark, Sam Breiting, who's been working a lot with, uh, with this uh, thing called mental ownership. And what he says, and it's quoted in the report, is the more one is involved in and work for any given chance, change, process, or better result, the higher the level of mental ownership one feels towards. And he also said, mental ownership creates a greater incentive to work for, follow up on, and take active part in something. And this is what is really the core of what we want to achieve as, as nature interpreters. We want this to happen. And how should we then act so this could happen? Have a little whisper. A little yeah, I just going back um, about this position. Many of us, we are very comfortable in this in front position. So Paul, you were once with a, with a guy that told the nature interpreter. What was it like? Oh, it was wonderful. This nature interpreter, he knew everything. He told us a lot of things. It was a wonderful trip. So what did you learn, Paul? But he knew all the birds. Each time we were just talking about what kind of bird is this, you could imitate the sound, and he told all the species' name, even in Latin. Yeah. So, so what can you do now, Paul? Um, other people should go to this person because he, he it was like an experience, like going to the theater. I mean, this was a wonderful. We have a lot of fun and amusement there. But um, what, what, how are you going to use this in your future life, Paul? Um, yeah, uh, I have to think about it. <laughs> and being that kind of nature interpreter, that have all this positive feedback from the audience all the time. And when I, as a nature interpreter, is coming home, oh, they applaud me. It was a wonderful trip. Because he's in front, and he got all this attention from people all the time. And he's even written about him in the papers. And now we talk, ask him to step down from that role. You should let the audience be in the front. They should be now the ones that are learning. That's now the difficult one. And it takes us more than two years to teach the nature interpreters to get away from that role and take a more humble role for the audience to be in front and let them be the one that are now <coughs> take the ownership. So it's no wonder that it's difficult for us who likes sometimes to be where I am. Otherwise, it's difficult to stay here. And to step down, let people go in front and train them to come into front. That is quite a task for us, and it's not easy. So when we have this personal experience, as you as NATO interpreters are good in giving to the participants, they have been sensitized. If you are good, they have even been touched their feelings. They have really be filled with something. From that personal experience, to come into an experience they can talk about and tell their parents or their friends, I have now learned and realized that we need to do something with biodiversity, or have a better change for life. To come from there, to come from this position, is quite a step. 
to do this, they need to communicate something for that personal experience to become a real experience from learn from. They need to communicate it. They need to put words on it. They need to share something. To do that, we become very important as nature interpreters because we are the one that initiate a reflection. We are the one that coming up with the frame. We are the one that ask them what kind of experience do you gain from today? We could ask them out of that personal experience. We could ask them, how was it, how was it to be, uh, have you gained any social skills today? Now they communicate with the social skills. They can, we can ask them to walk and talk. We can ask them to sit down and write in a, a notebook. We can have group discussions. It's us who decided. And each time we decide it, we have a new direction. Or we could ask them, what kind of special value did you see today in nature? Another question. If you ask them the special value you saw in nature today, my experience will be, oh, when I'm coming home, this was very good in nature. This species was of value to me. But we could also ask them, how was it to be together with your friends? Oh, that's a new direction now, a new experience that they talk about as coming home. Therefore, the nature interpreters, and it, it, it matters what kind of question to ask them. And it matters in which way they have to reflect on it. Should they walk together? Should they find a girl or a grown-up? Or how should they talk about, reflect about it? That is a crucial step for us to be aware of. So we can tell them, or can we ask ourselves, do we are we manipulating them? Or are we responsible for what we are doing with them? We can manipulate them in one direction by asking that kind of question. Or is it a responsible question? Because we want them to be responsible in being citizens of the world. So we make the frame and we are initiating the communication reflection. And we have a Danish philosopher called Ole Fogh Kirkeby. He says that I don't know what I mean before I hear my own voice being heard to myself. I have to speak it aloud so I can, like a mirror, give it back and then reflect on my words. So we need the audience to talk. We need them to talk aloud about their personal experience. What does it mean to me? So I talk with somebody. How often do we allow the participant to talk between them and not hear the monologue, the one nature interpreter in front taking all the talks to them like a monologue? They will never have the chance to find out what do I feel. So the importance of speaking out loud is important. So we as nature interpreters need therefore to be conscious about what is important for the participant to learn, realize, think about the way we ask them, the question, the way we are together, the way we meet them. And we can ask ourselves, what is the responsible question? How do, what kind of question we want to ask them? How should they reflect on it? Or how Allow, do we allow them to talk about it or inspire them to talk about it? So asking responsible questions that creates reflection becomes now very important. Some of the questions could be, what have you found most important today? Why? And it's an open question. We are curious to hear from the participant what has, what has been important to you today. Or what do you want to remember from today's activities? We have not talked about what kind of species are of most importance to you? We have totally open question. It could be the most important today, what, how we were together. How I related with this girl in my class or my best friend might be the most important thing. So what can we do about this when our intention was to deal with biodiversity? But if this was filled with them, if they was mainly engaged with this question or this answer, how can we use that? We can operationalize these questions to some kind of activity when we take the next question. What would you like, who would you like to cooperate with to ensure that changes will take place? Or what will you convince your parents about when you come home? So take it with them. So the personal experience become an experience that have an afterlife, that have a life after the activity with the nature interpreter. So it's not like an one visit and then come home separate from my daily life. 
So by having that question, they start now thinking, oh, and it has an impact on my further life. Therefore, we want you to be a bit involved right now. So please stand up, everybody in the audience, everyone. You say hello to your neighbor, and you will only have two minutes now, and you will ask him this question. <laughs> well, as, as you probably heard, uh, there's a lot of um, energy in, in doing this, and uh, I guess you, you could be going on for at least five more minutes, but well, we have the time schedule, as, as Eva said, so I'd like to continue now. Meaningfulness is an important word for us. Um, Meaningful experience again when when they're built on and integrated in, in the participants' everyday life. So you have to, and that's maybe stating the obvious, but you have to take take a starting point from where the audience are. You start from what is meaningful to them, and then from there on, they should create their own stories and activities. And it's in the in the it's in the thing when creating your own story from where you are that gives meaning and maybe can, can, can be the starting point for making a change. Uh, we'd like to give you some examples from how we work with this uh, in, in practic uh, practical in the education of nature and tourism in Denmark. Um, we have, we have this, this education of nature and tourism it's an in-service training. They meet seven, uh, on seven courses over a two-year period. And one of the courses, which is at the end of, the, of, of this two-year period, is, is a course that are dedicated to this specific role of being a facilitator, promoting ownership, and, 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 and being aware of how should you, as an nature interpreter, enhance this democratic skills among children, especially. Here we have an example of um, the nation churches were given the task to contact the local school. The local school had been in contact with us as uh, uh, responsible for the education. We made this agreement that the nation churches visited the school and um, visited especially um, eight uh, classes on the school that were all involved in how should the outdoor green space around the school be changed in that way that the children would like to be there more. Because they experienced that uh, the children, they were not using all the green area that they had around the school. And uh, in the town hall, they wanted um, to make some changes, but they also said, but the best way is if we listen to what the children do, because the children will have some opinions on what's important for them in, the, in the, these green outdoor areas. So what the nature interpreters did was they visited the school, they engaged the children, they made some activities outdoor. Here the nature interpreters were in front. They started some activities, they watched the children, then they stepped down, you could say, and, and were next to the children, and at, at the end, they stepped behind the children, and here you have this example of the children are now telling each other what's important for me in this green area, what I like it to be like if I should spend some more time here. Afterwards they went indoor, then they made these small models or examples of what should be in our green uh, outdoor area if we should be more active there, if, if it should be more playful for us, if we should spend more time there. Then they made these models, and these models were pre pre presented to the politicians in the town hall. And they actually used some of these examples. So when changing the green outdoor areas around the school, the children's own um, suggestions on what should be changed outside were taken into account. And that was very good, because suddenly the children had their voice heard, the direct way to the politicians in the town hall. Another example, which is just a very short one, we also, on another course, um, gave, gave the nation services some uh, cameras. They used the cameras uh, 
together with the children. The children were given the cameras, and they were uh, taking pictures of the of the the, the school way, the, the 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 green areas that they walked along from between home and school. And then they were asked, what what should it be like? What what do you what do you lack in these green areas? So that you would use them more, so, so that you won't be in the car with your mom and dad, and they're driving to school. But so that you could use your your school way as a as a transportation place. What what is what is lacking? And then the children were given the, we printed these pictures, and then they draw drew draw on the on the papers what what should be changed. Um, just another short example on on how that. That your children are given the possibility of, of yeah, showing what should it be like if changes were to be made. Mm -hmm. uh. And one small funny example is that they have been engaged in some activity for two hours and how to protect, should we protect something with nature or should we be using the nature? So they were given a, a challenge now to have this poetry slam. So they were divided into groups and coming up kind of a poetry from a user's point of view. We need to use because we are healthy and want to engage ourselves, it's funny. Or the protector, no, 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 you can't use, you have to protect, take care of nature, take care of the birds. So they're ending up having this poetry slam, battling together in words, confronting each other with their poet, in a way that is their words, there's their feelings, it's their point of view, and they can now speak it aloud in their language. So it's not our language they have to coming up, and now we have funny language. It's the teenager's language, and sometimes we hardly can understand it. <laughs> but to them, it was very funny, and they can now bring it with them home and work further on it. So it's not a one-day experience, but they try to bring it back home, it like was, as we call it, the afterlife, after the nature interp interpreter's visit or activities. So all this, we are ending up now, but we can end it up by, should we be na nature interpreters or should we be nature facilitators? Should we have a new profession here? How does one facilitate so as to inspire participants to engage themselves in questions on nature and the environment and let their voices be heard? And we as nature interpreters, <coughs> we have to be conscious of our own role, our knowledge and views, and has to facilitate our views, opinions, and discussions with an aim to encourage participants to reflect, and not with an aim to, now they need to know what I know, and they need to be responsible, and therefore you have to do like this and that. This involves participant-oriented work methods that organizes and establishes frames for learning processes, and that clarifies views and stimulate openness for understanding the views of others. Especially this last point, until now, we have talked about being involved in the decision-making process. How can you have influence? How can you influence the decision makers? From my point of view, me as the participant, I want to gain personally for this. But we are also saying that might be most important: be open for understanding the views of others. This way, we think we can understand democracy and becoming a citizen of the world. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.